dollar for every year, you're not going to be able to afford this job in the first place. Uh, <coughs> he's probably never going to speak. Bill Logan, again. do you have a birthday this week? Now you're shaking your head no. <coughs> Bill Logan, all right. When's your birthday, Bill? Next week. Next week. How old are you going to be? 89. All right. Wow. Give Bill Logan a hand. Uh, okay. No more birthdays, anniversaries. Sage, you don't want to get married anyway. Okay. Pity the boy. Sage, pity the boy. All right. Okay. If there's no more shenanigans that we can play, uh, uh, and let's turn to hymn number 446. We have a story to tell to the nations. 446. All right, and ushers, if you'd be prepared to come gather our offering, I'm going to kind of cut some of these hymns short, so let's do one and four again. We have a story to tell to the nations. Good to be with you this morning. I've enjoyed an hour with some of you earlier in Sunday school already, and um, I'm glad for the rest of you that have joined us. Uh, this morning, I'd like to begin by using uh, our sharing our scripture for today, which, if you want to follow along in your pew Bibles, is on page 1195, Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 1 to 9. Luke uh, chapter 10. We do something. Ready? You stand and read it together? No, you read it. Oh, you stand. Let us stand for the reading of the word. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. So ends the reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. 
I want to talk about this scripture for a minute as I lead into my sharing today. Because the first verse in chapter 10 says, after, after these things. What are these things that he's talking about? Well, chapter 9, right before this, is talking about the cost of following Jesus, the cost of discipleship. And at this point, the people have been hearing about Jesus. They've seen him do some miracles. They're excited about this, this man doing these wonderful things. And they're, many people are following him. And when he says, follow me, some are saying, yes, yes, Lord, I will follow. But first, let me go back and tell my family. Uh, or first, let me go back and bury my father. And what does Jesus say to them? He says that anyone who looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. It's pretty stringent, pretty strict. And I used to have trouble with that because I thought if I was the mother back home, I would sure want to know what happened to my husband. <laughs> Where did he go? Uh, but, but I think Jesus' point here, and we're going to see it again in chapter 10, is that if you really want to follow him, it's, you do it now, you do it obediently, you respond you don't have you don't get distracted by the things of the world around you. So after these things, the Lord appointed the seventy others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Now the reason I share this scripture before I share what we did in Thailand is because this is really the model that that I believe we should be following as well as those disciples of that day. This is not just something Jesus told those 70. He's telling us, this is how you go. This is how you do it. So I went to seminary, and I assume, Pastor Steve, that you also went to seminary or training. We learn all about evangelism. There's all these courses you can go to. But believe it or not, in about six verses, Jesus is pretty clear about the way, the way that we should be sharing and bringing people to the Lord. The first thing it says is, the harvest is great, but the labors are few. Therefore, do what? So you're going to have to learn about six things today. We'll see if you can remember. What was, what's the first thing it said in verse 2? You're going to have to probably keep your Bibles open. What do you do before you even start? Pray. He says, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his, into his harvest. So... Before you even go anywhere, prayer, right? And I know this church thinks prayer is an important, very important part of our journeys. Okay, so that's the first thing. And he doesn't minimize the danger, does he? He says, go like what kind of animal? Sheep among wolves. Is that a nice place to be? Not really. He's not minimizing that this is not an easy thing to do, but he's he's being very clear. Now here comes the first um, do not. Do not do what? Don't. Ladies, I know you always get this. The ladies always get it first. Do not take a purse or a bag. I'm like the ultimate bag lady. <laughs> if you look in my car, you'll know why I'd be like, what? And nor sandals. And then this is the hardest part for me. Don't do. Don't do what? Don't talk to <laughs> Don't talk to anyone. Don't greet anyone along the road. I thought this was really rude. I'm like, really? Don't say hi to them? But I think that, again, I know myself well. I would easily be distracted by someone along the road talking to me or needing something, and I would forget who I was actually following, right? So do not be distracted. So the first one was prayer, and the second one is uh, to go to go directly, to be obedient, not to get distracted. The third, when you get something to this. The third is when you get to a house, what do you do? Pray peace on the house. Yeah, you don't just walk up to it. You pray peace on the house. To me, this is about discernment, that you are asking the Spirit to lead you uh, to where the Spirit is already preparing the hearts and the open doors for you. Because he clearly says in the scripture, there are places where a person of peace is not residing, and you'll go on. So you, discernment is number three. So, so far we have prayer, we have 
responds or obedience. And now we have discernment. If a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. If it is there, what do you do next? Verse 7. You remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give you. Okay, so this is the first time it's said. It's actually said again. But you eat what they give you. You're appreciative. (laughs) You're gracious. Now, I will tell you that coming to your luncheon today is not a problem for me to eat what you give me. But in northern Thailand, sometimes in those Akka villages that we were in, a little tougher. You're not sure what you're eating, and you don't want to ask. But, you know, out of graciousness, um, you receive what they give, what they can give. So you eat and drink. And what happens when you're around the table with people? What happens? You get to know them. It's a building of relationship. You get a chance to know who they are. And it says, do not go from house to house. Isn't that interesting? It's it's telling you to stay there, to really get invested in these people. Then in verse 8, it says again, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. I find this interesting, and I don't know if this is historically or theologically correct, but, you know, in Matthew where Jesus says to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, I, I'm just curious because these 70 he's talking to, what is their background? What is their religious background? They're Jewish. Do Jews have a special diet? Absolutely. They're supposed to eat the kosher food. But twice here he says, eat whatever they put in front of you. And I just find that interesting. It's just my own thought. Don't, don't quote me as being an expert. But I just wonder if this is already Jesus preparing for the idea that they're going to go out beyond the Jewish world. And then um, in verse 9, we get the last two of my points. And heal the sick there. So out of relationship, you find out what their needs are. They, you've built trust. They're sharing. You can meet needs at that point, whether it's physical illness or whether it's um, emotional, psychological, mental, spiritual needs. You can meet those needs when you know them. And lastly, but not least, and equally as important, what do you tell them? Is it all about me? I'm, I'm coming. I'm being so good. The kingdom of God is near. Now, in this verse, we're probably talking about the kingdom of God is near because Jesus is literally on his way to their villages. The kingdom of God has come and is coming, and it is still uh, near today. So let's review those one more time, and then I'll move on. That clock is really obvious, isn't it? (laughs) I'm going to take a little license because certain people came and took some of the time this morning. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, what's that? The clock. Well, I decided you had me come speak today because he was speechless. Well, when he got the present, he was. Okay, so let's review. We have prayer, number one. Number two, obedience, number three. Number four. Yeah, like build relationship is what I would say on that one. Building relationship. Number five, healing their sick, meeting their needs. And number six, make sure it's pointing to the Lord who is the one who's brought you. Maybe you're you're his instrument, but you are not the the giver. The Lord is the giver. All right, now we're going to go to another verse. This one is my life verse that I chose while I was in college, and it's continued to be important to me uh, throughout my life and ministry. Would you read it with me, please? Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith. So again, remembering that it's Jesus who calls us, and it's Jesus to whom we are going. The cloud of witnesses referred to here is really Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. But I have others in my cloud of witnesses, and 
I hope today you'll think about those people that are part of your cloud of witnesses. My dad's parents, Fred and Hazel,